Okay, so what we have here is a, a step potential. All right, so the potential energy is zero um, at x uh, less than zero, and it's v naught at x greater than zero. All right, and we have a particle coming in from the left side, and it has an energy uh, greater than this v naught. This is a, so the energy is greater than this V naught. All right, so we're going to look at uh, Schrodinger's equation for this. All right, so uh, the time independent Schrodinger's equation just tells us that the Hamiltonian applied onto the wave function would give us the energy. All right, put a little hat on this, it's an operator. All right, Hamiltonian is. Uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy. All right, and the kinetic energy is P squared over 2M. And when we, um, when we uh, convert the, the P to an operator, we have uh, the, the I's will give us a minus sign. Um, bar squared over uh, this 2m. All right, so normally it's i h bar and then uh, d by dx, but the, the, we get the minus sign from the i's. Oops. Okay, so this is just the operator. Ran out of room, like always. There's our, our v. Okay. So that's kind of a mess, but let's write it out better. Um, so uh, when we go back and compare it here, which were two m d squared by dx squared plus v all applied to the wave function here is going to be equal to the energy. So this is just an eigenvalue; it's just a number, and. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, work this out. So we have h bar squared over 2m. All right. And so what we're going to do is move this over here. So we get an e minus v. Okay, and this is all going to be multiplied by the wave function. Um, I'm going to move this up on top like that. Okay, so multiply both sides by 2m and divide both sides by h bar squared. All right, and there's, and I'll also bring this minus sign over. So when we have a differential equation like this, um, I'll just still use psi here. Um, what we usually do is we have a constant, use k, like this, and then the solution to this, whenever you see uh, this form, um, you know what, I'm going to call this a minus k squared. Um, so then we get these, uh, the, uh, the i uh, will come out. We have a, a sines and cosines or a complex exponential, so we get oscillation. Oops, this is an e x, i k x, can't talk today, minus i k x. All right, so when we compare this situation to this situation, we have 
this piece right here is equal to k. All right, so um, I'll write that more explicitly, and it actually equal to k squared. Right, so k is equal to two m e minus v, and this is under a square root. And then the bottom is also under a square root, but it's squared, so we'll just take that off. So we just have an h bar down there. All right, so now um, we have our general solution to the uh, Schrodinger equation in a situation like this. And one thing to note is that when the energy is less than the potential, so that when the, the energy of the particle is less than the potential, which happens over, let me, let me make sure, no, yeah, never mind. This is not one of those situations, right, because our energy is larger than the potential. Okay, so great. That's awesome, because we'll, we'll still get oscillation here. But, but just uh, for the sake of argument, if we were to have, um, do this in a different color real quick. So suppose we had a particle down here coming in and it was less than this potential. Um, <coughs> you would get a minus sign under the square root and the I would come out and cancel with, um, with the I's out here. And Basically, you get tunneling, so you get a decaying exponential. All right, so, uh, but that's not the case here. So um, our energy is greater than this, and then the potential, and we'll always get the, the oscillations. All right, so um, we are going to um, let me, yeah. Let's just write down the solution real quick, just so we know that we're what we're clear on. Uh, for x less than zero and x greater than zero. All right. So these are the region over here and the region over here. All right. Again, we're not looking at this particle. We're looking up at this one. And um, so. Just write these out in sort of um, more more yeah. I'll write these out in a little bit more of a general form. Alright, so I'm going to use since the potential changes, I'm going to use different constants, but the form of it will still be the same. And let's put primes on these guys uh, because this V is different in the two uh, locations. All right. Um, so let's make this a little bit more specific. This is a V naught, and I'll call this one K prime, and then I'll I'll write another one here for for this one, which is just a two M E over h bar, the because the v is 0 over here, right? So 0, just take that out. OK. So here's our, our two solutions. And um, in general, what we have are, when you see uh, this plus sign up here, that's a wave moving to the right. And a minus sign here is a wave moving to the left. All right. So um, when we look at our problem, what we're going to have is the particle moving to the right to begin with, right? Then it encounters this discontinuity in the potential, and some of it will continue to move to the right, and some of it's going to be reflected and move back to the left. So in this region, we have um, the particle coming in, the incident particle, and then a reflected particle. So we have wave, you know, wave function moving to the right and to the left. 
but over here we, we don't have anything coming in uh, from the right and moving to the left right we don't have that because our particles starting out over here so it, it could only uh, be transmitted some of it will be transmitted and come this way so basically long story short we are going to get rid of this one because we don't have anything in the x equal the x greater than zero region uh, moving from the right to the left okay all right so we have two uh, boundary conditions we can use and um, one of them is that uh, the how to write this um, I'll, I'll just put a prime on I'll keep adding primes, but I'll, I'll go ahead and put a prime on this one since it's got the prime k, okay? Um, all right, just so we can distinguish the, the two, uh, these two regimes, okay? So one of them is that at x equals zero, the wave function itself must be continuous, all right? So the waves have to match up functions have to match up at this boundary between them. They have to have the same value. Okay, the other boundary condition is, I guess we're in one dimension, so I'll just write this as a total derivative. Is that their derivatives have to match up? Right? So these are our two boundary conditions, and that's what we're going to do to, uh, to get at least two of these coefficients out of the way. Okay, um, so we have a, uh, so w when, we, when we start with this one here, and we're going to plug in x equals zero, all right? And since the exponent of all of these are going to be zero, then this will go to one, this will go to one, and this will go to one. So on this side, for, uh, for our x less than zero side, at zero, we end up with a plus b. All right. Okay, so I just, I just wrote this, you know, at zero, um, psi is equal to a plus b. All right, this is going to be equal to, on this side, this will, in this exponential term, we already decide this one was zero, right? This one is going to give us one, and so we just have c on this side. a plus b equals c. All right, and I'm going to write, so the c is the prime, uh, the prime part, and the this one here is just the, uh, the unprimed one. Both evaluated at zero, we get this equation right here. All right, so now let's do the derivative. So here's my notes. Um, so uh, now we're going to take the derivative of this, all right? So that's easy enough. We are going to, for the first part, well, we just bring down an i k, and we have that multiplied by a, and then we'll also have this e to the i k x, but again, we're at x equals zero, this will go to one, okay? So we don't worry about that. Okay, this, uh, for this one, we're gonna bring down a minus i k, multiplied by a b here, right? And then this term, this, uh, this factor here goes to one again, okay. Um, and then for here, we bring down a positive i k prime. Okay, positive i k prime. So again, this is the psi side, and this is the uh, psi prime, c or whatever, however you want to pronounce that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, get rid of these i's, divide them all out. Okay, so now that we have our two equations, I'm gonna 
I'll write them again here, clean them up a little bit. So a plus b equals c, and um, I'm going to write this a minus b equals k prime over k. So just factor this k out and divide by it. Uh, multiply by c. So let's see. What we're going to do now is uh, solve for uh, b and c in terms of a. We have two, uh, un uh, two equations, three unknowns, so we'll have to leave one of them in general, which we'll deal with with the uh, normalization. Um, but that doesn't really affect us because we're going to be looking at sort of the ratios of the two probabilities. So in the end, a is going to divide out anyway when we look at uh, transmission and reflection coefficients. Okay, so let's see how, how should we do this. Um, I'm going to look at, let's see, if we um, go ahead and write uh, v. So I'm going to take this equation here, and I'm going to write that as equal to a minus k prime over k multiplied by c. Okay. Um, b is also equal to c minus a. All right. So now I'm going to solve this part for. C. So, yeah, so we'll just do something like this. I'm going to bring this A over, so we have 2A on this side, and I'll bring this over, so we have a C. I'll, I'll factor it out as a, a 1 from this term here, plus a K prime over K, like this. All right, so this tells us, write that up here, C equals. 2a over a1 plus k prime over k. All right, and we can. I'll write that up at the top here as uh, c equals. I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by k. So 2k a, uh, and that's a, a k plus a k prime. Okay. So now, uh, let's work on B. Well, uh, B is just equal to C minus A. So that's equal to 2K over K plus K prime minus 1. So all I did was uh, plug in this here for C and then factor out the A. All right, so let's see if we can write this in a little bit better uh, form. So uh, on the top, we have a, a 2k minus a k minus a k prime, all over k plus k prime. Okay. Pun there. All right. Here's a song. Um, I'll just uh, uh, subtract this out. So basically we have a, a k minus a k prime over a k plus a k prime multiplied by a. All right, let's put this in a box to keep it separate. And we'll also put this one in a box. Okay, so now what we've done is we've solved for c and b in terms of a. So if we now take a, a moment to go ahead and write out our wave functions. For x less than 0, we had uh, psi is equal to, it was an a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x. All right, so this is equal to a e to the i k x plus, now we'll just plug in our b, uh, k minus k prime 
over k plus k prime a e to the minus i k x. Okay, and then for x greater than zero, we had our psi equal to c e to the i k x. This was a k prime, right? Because the potential is different. That changed. Uh, that means our equation for k is different. So, well, same equation, just as uh, we get a different value because um, the potential is different. So uh, now we can plug in our c, which from up here is 2ka over k plus k prime e to the i k prime x. Okay, so now what we're going to do is look at the probability currents and uh, and then the ratios of those probability currents will give us our, our uh, coefficients of reflection and transmission. So the formula for probability current is h bar um, 2 i m, where you can bring the, the i up to the top, it'll cost you a minus sign. Okay, we have a psi star. x minus uh, psi and derivative of uh, psi star with respect to x. All right, so we're going to take these pieces individually. It'll be nice and easy that way. Um, so let's just look at the probability current flowing to the right. Um, so I'll start by putting an x less than zero, and I will just call this j with a, an arrow to the right, okay? So that's this term right here, a e to the i k x. So we have an h bar 2 i m, the complex conjugate of this. Oh. Obviously, we're going to have an a squared coming out from here, okay? Well, I mean, I guess um, if a is complex, it will be the, the norm of a squared, like this, okay? So I'm that way I, I don't have to worry about this a throughout this thing. So, um, so here we have an e to the i k x, and we have a minus because we're taking a complex conjugate of it. And then for this derivative, we are going to just bring down an i k, and then have an e to the i k x. Okay, and now we will subtract, and this time uh, we just have an e to the i k x here, and when we take the complex conjugate, we'll get a minus i k x up on top. So when we take the derivative, we bring down a minus i k. And then we have our e to the minus i k x. Okay, so um, these uh, this minus sign here means we just bring this down here and divide by it, and it's the same thing. So we get a one. Our exponentials go away. I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, a plus plus instead of a minus minus, and so. Um, we just have a 2 i k in this, uh, this big term right here. So our final answer here, we're still going to have, we're, we're going to end up dividing this 2 i top and bottom. So we have an h bar, we have the norm of a squared, and we have a k right here and divided by m. All right. Um, so uh, make a list here. I'll just copy this over a little bit. So for x less than 0, our j to the right is equal to 
Home row of a squared, h bar k over m. All right. We will set this aside and add the next one to it. All right, so we're going to continue with at uh, x less than 0, except this time we will be finding j in the probability current to the left. All right. And just like before, um, we we now are going to, you know, rather than uh, go ahead and uh, write out B, I'm just going to still call it B for now, uh, just to make it all simpler. All right, so yeah, we expect we'll get something that's very similar to, um, to uh, what we got for A. Um, but this minus sign here is basically the only difference. Okay, so um, first we take the, oh yeah, we need our norm squared of uh, B this time. All right, so first we're taking our complex conjugates, so we get an E to the plus I KX, and then we are taking the derivative with respect to this normal uh, wave function here, so we have a minus i k coming down, e to the minus i k x. All right, now same story as before. This time we have the e to the minus i k x out front for our normal wave function. When we uh, take the complex conjugate, this is stuff everywhere. Oh, right. This time we'll make this positive, so we bring down a positive i k, and then we have a e to the positive i k x. Okay, there we go. Once again, these parts can divide out, except now we have a minus i k minus i k. So inside here we get a minus two i k. All right. So it is very similar to the other case, except this time we have a minus sign out here. We'll go ahead and divide out this 2i. Um, and, and we also have the uh, b squared. Oh, right. And we have a k. So let's go ahead and write that on our list. This time we're looking at the current moving to the left. We have a minus sign, which I forgot to write minus uh, normal b squared h bar k over m. Great. Now let's look at x greater than 0. Um, and here we only have a j moving to the right. We're going to do the same thing, except uh, this time we have a c here. Okay, and I'm going to take a shortcut here because um, the only, uh, basically, it's the same as this first term that we did up here with A. There's a, you know, the only difference before w when we switched to B was this minus sign and switching to B. Now the only difference is we're switching to C. So we don't, we know exactly what we'll get. It's going to look exactly like uh, what we did up here for A except for two differences. One is there will be a C instead of an A, and there will be a K prime instead of a K. All right, so um, we can just write that out real quick. H bar C norm squared K prime over M. All right, don't know why I even bothered to write it on, on that sheet, because we're going to put it here on our master sheet here, so uh, this is the uh, moving moving to the right, okay, and again it looks exactly like this except for the k prime and a c instead of the, instead of the a. k prime. All right, so um, let's see, maybe we should Look at some new. I'll just I'll just write these out here. So this was our incident wave function. Uh, this one is the reflected one. 
and this one is transmitted. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and look at our um, coefficients. So now that we have our currents, uh, we have a, I'll call the reflection coefficient big R. All right, big R is going to be this reflected uh, divided by the incident. Okay, and um, and I guess um, you know here we, we have this minus sign here for the uh, for the uh, direction, right? I guess. Uh, you, yeah, when we when we have this minus sign here, I guess we could kind of call J a, a vector, right? It's in the x hat direction. Okay, I guess these currents, probability currents, we can look at as vectors. But when we're looking only at the magnitude of the incident versus the reflected wave, we're going to uh, ignore this minus sign. Kind of like speed, we'll, we'll be looking at the ratio of the speeds rather than ratio of the velocities. Okay. Um, all right. So again, uh, without this minus sign here, basically we have a norm b squared h bar k over m. And then I'll make a, a big awkward fraction out of this. So as I write the um, uh, this here on the bottom. Okay, and all of these parts will divide out except for b norm squared over a norm squared. Okay, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and plug in what we got for b now. Now that we're out of the woods of all this calculus and everything, we had this for our b. So um, we, what we get here is this a, uh, when, we, when we square this, this a part will also be squared, and it will divide out with what's below here. So all we will have is, is this term here, but it's going to be squared. So k minus k prime over k plus k prime, and this is all squared. All right, now for our transmission coefficient. Now we are looking at, somewhere here I have my list. Now we're going to look at the transmission, uh, the, the magnitude of the transmitted wave uh, divided by this incident wave here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, I, I won't write the h bar on the m because those parts will divide out. But what we have this time is a c norm squared, except now these now we have a k prime that will not divide out with the, the k below. Okay, but we have this c and this a both squared. Now um, let's go ahead and plug in what we got for c. And here it is. Okay. So when we square this, the a will be squared and it's going to uh, divide out. And this k here is also going to be squared and divide out. So this, uh, we have a 2 and it's, uh, let's see here, a 2, yeah, um, right, the k divided out, this top k, a k plus k prime. So this part is squared, and then we have a k prime out here. All right. Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, my mistake here was this is only one power of k, 
and we had two powers of k up here. So from our from our c, I said this k canceled with this k, but really c is squared, so there are two powers up here. So only one of them canceled, so we have this. All right, there's still one left over. All right, so um, let's just write this this way. 4k prime k over k plus k prime. Wait, somebody wants it. I'm gonna go get that. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is just double check and make sure that r plus t equals one. So r plus t is equal to k minus k prime squared over k plus k prime squared. Okay, so here's the r. Now we're going to, we have the same denominator here, right? So let me just extend this out real quick and I'll just add on this uh, 4k uh, k prime right here. All right, so when we work out the top here, we get a k squared minus 2k k prime plus k prime squared and then uh, plus a 4k k prime, okay? Uh, so this is just the top of this, all right? And what we can see is that uh, when we, these two terms will combine to give us k squared plus 2k k prime plus k prime squared, all right? And that, when we uh, factor that out, we get a k plus k prime squared, which is the same as our denominator here, k plus k prime squared r plus t is equal to k plus k prime squared top and bottom, which is equal to 1. So all of our probability is accounted for, just like it, just like it should be.